<laughs> Save the drama for your mama. Or your llama. The sound ring. We're live. Paul, did you say we're live? Yeah, this got dark right before <laughs> we even started. Alright, I'm gonna start it off. Ready? Nope. Hullabaloo and Timbuktu. Kick him in the dishpan. Who, who, who? Oh, God. I'll give you guys ten bucks if you can tell me what that's from. Whatever that video was you sent last week that I didn't watch. Ten bucks Canadian? Ten bucks American. <laughs> Ooh, that's like 37 Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hullabaloo and Timbuktu. Kick him in the dishpan. Who, who, who? No? Nobody? Nope. I mean, I could Google it, nope. but I feel they'd be cheating. That was from uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog, the one where uh, Muriel's like gets possessed by the demon in the haunted mattress. I mean, you and lost me like at the, the title, so. You don't remember Courage the Cowardly Dog? No. Oh, it's a like Cartoon Network. You dude. have to remember that. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that was like the uh, spell to reverse the curse, and then the demon goes, "You call that an incantation?" So were they all okay at the end? Yeah, I think so. I think the little rats oh. took the like haunted mattress back to the, like the fucking cave or whatever. Oh, thank God. Hope, did you happen to watch Ping Pong Summer? I did not. It's still on my wish list. Okay, but you did watch Windy City Heat. I absolutely did. Fred, did you? No, I didn't have time. Okay. For shame. And Paul, you you watch Windy City Heat too? Yeah. What, Hope, what did you think of Perry? I mean, I think that he's one of the greatest actors of our time. You think that was an act? Gaga 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 It was great. Do you, do you think it was an act? No, 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 I think he was legit. If, if that was an act, he is the greatest actor ever. Agreed. But there's, there's no way that was an act. He is just... Really dumb. You are the ultimate <laughs> ultimate. Yeah, you are like uh, the ultimate ultimate. <laughs> and he's doing his commentary. He's like repeating exactly what he says. Well, he has it, a Steven Seagal smoothness about him. Didn't he it's say like a that? young Marlon Brando. <laughs> didn't he say that about himself? He's like, I'm like uh, Steven Seagal. Yeah. yeah, he also <laughs> says he's like uh, Bobby De Niro. <laughs> I remember Drew didn't like that. He's like, oh, he calls him Bobby. Bobby De Niro. Yeah, it's a little overly familiar for my liking. I don't know how I feel about that. Scary Perry, though. It's okay. Scary, yeah. <laughs> they keep spelling his name wrong. He's like, God, they spelled it with a K. Carabella. <laughs> unleash the Fury. Yeah, Unleash the Fury. I like when um, when when they keep jumping on him to like, celebrate and like, Don's sitting on his head and it's in <laughs> slow motion. God, God damn it! <laughs> like where he's like uh like meeting that producer and then he's like not trying to shake his hand he's all i'm just getting over some poison oak <laughs> like after he shakes <laughs> <the shit. laughs> so well paul what did you think of of perry the man the person oh he's just fucking hilarious and fucking probably the best butt of a joke ever <laughs> Yeah, what was really great too is like the when they have him do the sex scene, but then like right right before that they feed him like cheese pizza even though he keeps saying he's lactose intolerant. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and he has to shit and dance outside the bathroom like so what are you okay? there? <laughs> He's like, what do you think? <laughs> he's like, what? I just, I just heard a noise. Oh, my ass! <laughs> have I had sex with a woman where I've bit her bra off? Many times. Many, Many times. times. I like how he admits to towards the end, he's like, it's like only once, only happened once. I let a guy suck my dick and I jerked him off. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do nothing. The, there's my, actually. <laughs> I squint my left eye. It means you're going to die. You're going to die. <laughs> he, this guy needs his ass kicked. Bad. <laughs> There's um there's actually like commentary or not commentary but bonus footage uh on the DVD where 
they they're at Perry's apartment and they watch the movie for the first time. The three the three guys, and um, Perry doesn't understand what it is. Yeah, he's like he thinks it's like the the movie's still real, right? And like he yeah, doesn't know I, what's going on with like them making a movie about it. <laughs> yeah, he he doesn't understand the fact that, like he he he's he thinks he's watching like a reality show. Like he thinks it was a reality show about a movie that never got made. <laughs> he doesn't understand Which, that he's the whole point of the movie. <laughs> Which is what makes him the best butt of the joke ever, of all time. Yeah, like there's there's like a, a one where he watches it by himself and he does his own commentary and he talks about everything in there. He's sitting there talking to the audience, and it's so weird. He understands that. They're fucking with him at some points, but he doesn't understand that the entire thing is uh, about him. He doesn't get it. <laughs> Man, Fred don't get it right now either. Just spoilers. Nope. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, well, you know. I, I said it was mandatory. This is what happens. <laughs> I mean, I don't follow instruction. <laughs> Do you need me to uh, pull or tug on anything? <laughs> <laughs> Are you well, that was that was uh, are you asking me. That was <laughs> that was Tom Kenny. That was uh, yeah. SpongeBob. <laughs> Oklahomos, the set of Oklahomos. <laughs> when he's like, he has a stunt double like doing the scene. He's just like walking around in his fucking underwear and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm just like pissed off. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course she loved it. <laughs> I'm deeply concerned about this conversation. <laughs> You've done your city. homework. <laughs> Don't give me the half eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of touch. I'm out of, th and I'm simply out of time. <laughs> There's trouble brewing up. And the Japanese producer is named Hiroshima. What was it? <laughs> Hiroshima, Hiroshima Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got Perry knocked over the table. The fucking mole. <laughs> Yeah, mole the 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 drug addict. <laughs> so I guess that was um, what's his name? Uh, who produced it? Jimmy Kimmel was like a big part of that movie. Oh, was he? Yeah, he. I think he was the producer or something. And then they go on a show after, and they they hound Perry about being a gay man or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like how right away, Hope, you said um, you're like, is this like a real? Uh, Truman Show. I never really thought of that, but like, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he's all there's, yeah, not, I mean, there's they... not fifteen cameras around here. <laughs> yeah, he's like none of none of this equipment actually works. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a real Truman Show, but with a guy who has brain damage. He actually does have brain damage. He does, I know. <laughs> yeah, they they said, I, I think he says it in the stand up. He's like, uh, he got in a car accident and he has brain damage, but I've heard from. Uh, people who talk about or people who know Perry they're like you know this guy deserves everything that he gets because he would he like throws people under the bus like nothing and he fucking will just you know shatter friendships and over nothing and shit like that <laughs> so you, you, we don't have to feel bad for him and he's still going out he's on he's live right now on YouTube good for him let's, let's... he has new handlers that and uh, people pay him to do stuff uh, in his apartment, like, they were trying to pay him to put an egg in the back of his toilet. And then he just starts screaming, and they send, like, fish fillets and McDonald's to uh, to his house, and he just gets really mad. It's pretty good. Maybe we should uh, descend the pod and just watch that. Again? <laughs> Together? No, like one no. of those Netflix uh, theater shows? No, his live stream or whatever. God. <laughs> you have to be You have to be pretty bored to do something like that. It's It's... It's not as bad as Cobra. He's at least more entertaining than Cobra is. <laughs> I like when the, the, the guy, uh, John Quincy Adams, calls and he's like, Are you in my chair? <laughs> like I'm by your uh, cow or calf or whatever the hell that is. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was Mole. people who auditioned for his role. Oh, yeah, he walked right in. Yeah, there, there was like Arnold <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> George Clooney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck, and then yeah, that, that was Mole who was uh, John Quincy Adams, and yeah, I guess he... Perry figured that out. <laughs> like, during the commentary, he's like, see, Mole walks out of the room, and then the phone rings, and he does that, uh, <laughs> the British accent. 
<laughs> Bobcat, he's like, I know a lot of actor, or uh, a lot of directors say action, but I just say, an act. Act. <laughs> I thought he said act. Act. <laughs> And I like when uh, Mole and Don and Perry, they, like, do their little fucking, like, uh, I don't know, like, little prep talk, and then they're like, the big three! The yeah, big three! <laughs> what do you they're say, the, new, the three stooges the, of the new millennium? Yeah, the three, yeah, the three <laughs> stooges of the new millennium. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. So good. I was, like, watching that during work, and it was just, like, I was watching it, like, at 7 in the morning, just, like, fucking busting up and shit. <laughs> That's how you want to start your day off. That sounds pretty nice. Yeah, it was. It's so short, too. And it goes by, like, really quick. There isn't, like, too many different scenes going on. But, um, like, it, it goes off and flows really well. It's it's hilarious. Yeah, the man. How long is the it? man. I think an hour it's 20. An hour you know, for all the uh, viewers or listeners and uh, hosts out there that didn't watch it. Yeah, it's shorter than our podcast. An hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, the Windy City. Everyone should watch. Highly recommend. I actually um, went to the post office. They sent uh, everybody's stuff out today. You too. I got the international shipping done. The Canadians. Ooh. Oh. What are you sending? Yeah. Uh, the new CDs that we just did. Fun. And I had to send. It's... Um, it's such a weird project. I, I love it. It's it's yeah. No, you checked it out. Yeah, well, ever since you mentioned it uh, a few weeks ago, I've uh, I've listened to a few of their releases. Uh, last one I listened was Blow Away Blunt, Blunt Flint, which I think is on this CD, right? Yeah, it's the, the last two full Philly. lengths on one CD. Yeah. Okay. And it's it, it's weird. It's primitive. It's. Uh, and I love the prehistoric theme. It's just, I love it. I don't know what else to say. It's is that the dungeon quirky. crypt? Yeah, dungeon yeah. crypt. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get around to that yet. Yeah, another dungeon uh, slash whatever band. Dungeon something. But yeah, the the prehistoric thing is weird. Like, I th- I feel like when you usually have bands like that, they're all, they're probably going to go in a hardcore direction. I don't know why I feel that. Maybe it's because of, like, the other fossilized or, like, early man or something. But, yeah, it, it actually does sound primitive. It sounds like um, s- some kind of, like, ancient fucking mysticism or magic or something like that. Because it has all those, like, really catchy melodies in it, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it's, and uh, Paul, Paul it's kind of, kind of reminds me of Man of War, too. Yeah, it, it really yeah. is. It, it, it straight up sounds like heavy metal, but... Done yeah, really, I, I, def- really... I definitely hear the Man of War comparison, for sure. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Are you guys familiar with the um, Romans Project Precambrian? Yes. Like Roman uh, from Cambrian? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I know what it is. I don't know that I've ever really listened to it, or maybe just for like a minute. Really good. I mean, it has a little bit of that like dinosaur fossilization type themes going on. Yeah, but that's more of like it's, a it's atmosphere true, project, but it right? doesn't have an album cover with an, a giant dragonfly drawn in pencil crayon. It does <laughs> not. And that's the problem. That's the problem yeah, with it. That's a big drawback. Yeah, it looks cool with the crayon, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a your album covers a crayon. You know what? I like it. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, me too. The sort of thing I like. Oh, I wanted to mention too uh, what happened last week where we had um, we were delayed. A day because the the <laughs> dogs got skunked and they ran around your donut house oh, jesus lord Aww. his face still smells really <laughs> yep like we've, well, we've that, washed him well that stinks point, waiting it out. <sighs> so does tomato juice actually All right, work so or is we're, that... just, we're just ending the podcast now right <laughs> why because of the because of the the, the stinky dogs i don't know the rim shot like <laughs> uh, no, I, apparently tomato juice does not work. Yeah, I, I've heard that was just a myth. It doesn't uh, really do anything. It doesn't fix the problem, we went, only masks it. We went straight to the harsh chemicals. We just went right for the bleach. <laughs> bleach? Like he, 
He w- he was a black dog. Now he's white. It's crazy. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> no, we have this um, anti skunk kind of shampoo thing that you rinse out with other dog shampoo, and it, it does a pretty good job. Like he, after the same night, the one that got mainly skunked uh, was a lot better. But I mean, that residual smell is going to be there for weeks. Like there's nothing you can do about that. So. If he's just walking around, you're not going to smell it, but if you, like, put your face in his, you're, you're going to smell skunk. Hey, so it's not it's not totally wafting around? No, no, at this point, if you walk in the house, you're not going to smell it. If uh, uh, he walks by, you're not going to smell it, unless you just, like, go nose to nose with him. Yeah, I, I mentioned that to Paul. I'm so like, we are. I'm like, oh, we forgot to uh, to, to mention the, the skunk dog thing. And, and he's like, uh, he's like, that's, he's like, that's, he's like, that's, is that personal? I'm like, how is that personal? <laughs> I'm like, if my, my mama got skunked, I'd tell the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, um, it sucked. <laughs> like, I messaged you guys. And I'm like, yeah, my dog got skunked. Uh, we might have to reschedule. And you're like, oh, we'll just wait for you. I'm like, all right, let's see what I can do in a little bit of time and then like an hour and a half later I'm like yeah no this is <laughs> this is gonna take us all fucking night we were like cleaning till like 11 30 12 o'clock stupid <laughs> yeah we waited like, I, I listened to uh, so, Paul watching th- I guess I, guess I didn't <laughs> I, I guess I didn't really explain this like so he got sprayed like in the face like in the mouth and we didn't realize because he was at the back of the of the backyard and he comes running in and we're just like, well, I was upstairs, but he just comes running in, which is not unusual for him. He's like, he's a young dog. He runs. But after he ran past my wife, she got a whiff of the skunk. She's like, oh, my God. <clears throat> but at this point, he's already run around the house once. And because he got sprayed in the mouth, he's basically spitting up skunk everywhere. And I'm just, So we have to mop the floor. We have to, oh, my God. And he was squinting as <laughs> he got it in the left eye. He's like, He looked like a pirate. Fuck. <laughs> so that was my Monday. You know, it's a lot more fun than that watching Frasier. It was good, just waiting around. But watching it's Frasier. still, still better than going to a Green Day concert. <laughs> Why did you go to a Green Day concert? No, never. He likes to make fun of me because um, I'm a, I'm a Green Day fan. Dude, he's was... good. Oh, are yeah, you? Green Day's I mean, cool. I was, I was just saying. I was just saying Green Day. That's that's, that's just mm. wow. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Okay, Billy Corgan. Green Day's cool. Um, oh, yeah, you're a pumpkin guy. <laughs> yeah, is the pumpkin head really ragging just, on the Green Day fans? <laughs> did you just call me fat? <laughs> <laughs> no, just bald. I called you you're a pumpkin, pumpkin head. guy. <laughs> At least that's a cool Smashing, movie. Smashing pumpkins, dude. What? Wait, what's a cool movie? <laughs> pumpkin, pumpkin head. head. Never oh, that movie was kind of cool. That's the one where they like <laughs> resurrect the the demon, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one was cool. I feel like I have a little bit of a delay. Is it just me? No, we're just slow. <laughs> oh, it. Here, respond. Go. Yeah. Go. Hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> thought there was a delay or something. No. I thought the same thing too. No, we're just uh, slow reactors. <laughs> Well, I have my Monster Zero Ultra here. I'm going to get some fucking energy. <laughs> Sip. Hey, dude. Do you ever listen to um, the Immortal demos? Like the death metal one and then the uh, one that leads up into uh, Full Moon Mysticism? Yeah, like the amputation stuff? Um, well, the the one right after the amputation stuff, the, uh, I forget what it's called, the the Immortal demo from 91, it's got like a, oh, some dragon yeah, yeah. looking guy on it. Yeah, I think it's just called Immortal. Yeah, I think so. I think people yeah. usually call it by like the first track, like Suffocate the Masses, but it's, uh, I think it's just self-titled. Yeah, yeah, no, I've heard that. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy, dude, like, some of that early, like, since you were talking about, um, Satyricon, Last week, I, I was kind of going through the first three albums, and I never realized that uh, that first the first album was as early as it was, fucking ninety three. Yeah. Ninety two, I think. Ninety two. No, yeah. I think it's ninety three. No. Ninety two. Is it? it right now? 
Or no, no, no. I, I meant the uh, Satyricon album. I know Immortals' oh. first album is '92. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, oh, okay, but yeah, that that it was listening to that too. It's like, man, that shit is really fucking early. Yeah. So, what is the earliest like black metal? Black metal would that be like Burzum, besides like, like Mayhem Studio tracks? Like what? Like Second Wave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Second Wave sound. Oh, that, that's hard. I mean, like it's. That's freezing not moon, probably, like, right? I don't know. It's such a shade of gray because, like, if you look at Blaze in the Northern Sky, that's basically just the return with longer songs. So, I mean, the return basically sounded like the second wave already. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, a lot of those early bands, what do you get? You get Bathory, and then uh, who would you say is the other, like, giant influence there venom hellhammer yeah probably yeah. probably like celtic frost and, and just bathory then yeah the usuals i mean you've also got yeah, I... sodom and early early destruction and early creator right but they mm -hmm. especially sodom had a bit more of a, a a closer to second wave black metal sound but uh no i think uh Bathory and Hellhammer is the ones that really influence the second wave the most. Because, I mean, there was a lot. I mean, so let's just say the, the second Brazil wave. Brazilian bands kind of took a different route to get there, right? So, yeah, I was right, going right, to mention right. all them too. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that that's that's almost approaching like death metal via like brutal thrash. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or 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 black metal in the same in the same kind of direction. But I mean, what would be probably the safest thing to say for like what the what's the first uh second wave black metal release or song? I I probably Freezing Moon, right? In 1990. So, for I me, would make it's... an argument for Thorns. How early is that? Didn't that come they out went before back to Freezing Moon? Yeah. To what? 80s, they, but they, I, yeah, I'm Thorns sure goes the back first, to the 80s. It does, yeah, but do they sure have the a first demo came out before Freezing Moon? Uh, Thorns from Norway. Yes. Yeah. No, they haven't. They have a demo in '91. Yeah, but they were called Stigma Diabolicum before. They had something. They had uh, rehearsal demo stuff coming out in the I think '89 or '90. Holy shnikes! It, it, so does this? Does this? I've never heard this. Does this sound like? Like what you would expect second wave to sound like. It's it... very similar to Burzum in terms really? of the riffing style. Yeah. It's the start of tremolo picking. For every, for every band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Well, 1989. Where so there weren't any other. There were probably 80s bands that did tremolo. No. Like Volcano or Holocausto or some shit like that. I'm Maybe, not musically not... competent enough to be able to tell you. Yeah, I don't. I don't not know either. I, I. Okay, not in this style. Yeah, I don't even know this demo. Okay, so there you go. I was trying to like backtrack and figure out where where does exactly this sound kind of come in, because like the besides Freezing Moon in '90, uh, what do you have like Burzum's first demo '91? That's pretty much like uh, a game changer well, kind of right. Well, Burzum even released the uh, the Urukai stuff um, that predates those demos, and there's some of those ideas already floating around at that point, and those were late 80s, I think, uh, that they were recorded. But, I, I mean, when it comes to, like, a watershed moment for second wave black metal for me, and this is going to be different for everyone, I guess, but to me, the watershed moment that marks where second wave was really really in the full swing is blazing the northern sky and like i said the transition from first wave to second wave is very much a, a continuous thing it's not like all of a sudden boom there you are a second wave but if i had to pick a moment it'd be that one because that one had the sound it had the aesthetic it had the influence uh it kind of had everything all cemented in one place so for me, when I think where did second wave start, that's usually where I kind of drop drop the pin. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, because you, you still have, uh, like, inklings of um, Soul Side Journey in there. Like, the little... Uh, yeah, for sure. Bits. But, it. like, when you listen to the sound, it's got the, the raw production. And we all know they took the return and basically said, just make it sound like this. And that's that's fine. But sure. they had, the you know, the face, the face paint on the cover. Black and white aesthetic. The low production. And then they had the exposure to influence all those other bands that wound up sounding like Dark Throne. So... Again, it's gonna be different for everyone, but for me, when I think second wave, that's the one that kind of my mind goes to. Yeah, watershed yeah, is a, a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a few other um, really early demos. I was surprised that it was that early, like the uh, Carpathian Forest. I didn't know they were around since '92. Yeah, I love their demos. They're so doomy. Yeah, man, it's 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 so different. Like then, what you would, what they sound like now, or what they've sounded like, you know, for the past like fifteen years. Yeah, like the first album was really punky, and like if you heard the, the demos and the EP, when you put on Black Shining Leather, like whoa, hang on, wait, what, what just happened? Yeah, yeah, Black Shining Leather is almost like, like like jokey, and like it's like making fun of itself, kind of. Yeah, like that's when they kind of got the tongue in cheek sense of humor. They started. When did they have that, that big fat bass player? I think that was. I know he was on Defending the Throne of Evil. I don't know too much about the lineup changes on the two prior albums, except for Nordavin leaving. But yeah, because that's that's one of those cases where it's you you need to see them live. It's it's a sight to behold. Yeah, I've never seen them. I'd like to see them. I, I would. I would well, say the same for... about. Um... <laughs> I don't know if I want to see them anymore with Natafrost basically walking off the stage and just falling <laughs> right straight down. <laughs> that so video was... You know, I was wondering, why haven't we heard of a Carpathian Forest album in, like for ages? That video pretty much answered it for me. <laughs> yeah, when did that happen? Because I've like... heard about this. I haven't seen it, I don't think. That, that was just a couple months ago, wasn't it? That was a recent yeah, video. Yeah, this year. He's wearing like Adidas track pants. Oh, you know what? I did see it. I did see him with, with the track pants falling off the stage. Well, there was a few other moments like that, wasn't there? It was like Abbott running down the hill and he fucking falls. <laughs> it's like, I mean, yeah. what do you yeah. expect when you're running down a muddy hill? <laughs> but, yeah, but that's the thing, right? Like, that that's That was him being like a goofy dork, right? Like he's running along a muddy hill with a guitar <laughs> and, and armor, basically. Of course he's going to fall. Natafrost was just whacked out of his mind. He looked like he was barely conscious. <laughs> did Did you guys see the video of um, of Abbott in like Portugal or something? And he gets too drunk and he can't play the guitar and he's like crying in some lady's arms. It, isn't Isn't <laughs> that like that? right yeah. before he went to rehab? Yes, yes, it was. I think people were like out, like in the buildings throwing stuff and booing him or something. Yeah, that's another watershed moment, isn't it? <laughs> The, the sad clown. I think it's like the cringiest performance I've seen, and I've seen I've seen a few. Cringiest are we talking one in I've person seen, or? Yeah, in person. Um, was okay, okay. make a change, kill yourself. Um, so it's oh, it's DSBM, so you already yeah. know, yeah, okay. DSBM, so I already know it's going to be a little bit cringy. But um, the guy, first of all, it was horrible. They were not good. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he went on this like really long diatribe about using drugs and like killing yourself because your life isn't worth it and then he threw out some pills into the crowd and I was like alright I gotta see what this is <laughs> fucking Advil and not just <laughs> Advil, any Advil nice. liquid gel liquid gel Advil thrown into the crowd Do it was doesn't even look like real drugs not even remotely, no. It's like the little, like, blue water-filled ones. He could have, like, yeah. could have threw some, like, Flintstone <laughs> gummies or something. I know. Yeah, it, it's basically the same thing. So, he's on stage advocating for suicide, and ironically, is still alive. That's right. Mm. Yeah, I, I've yeah, always like... found that weird with DSBM bands. Like, <laughs> if yeah. you're pushing for suicide, how are you still making music? Uh, except the, the band... <laughs> Yeah, no, the Canadian band Malvery. They had oh, yeah. one album. <laughs> yeah, and then like months, I th I don't even think he, it was released yet when the singer committed suicide. But uh, yeah, that, uh, they followed through with that.
<laughs> that album that album's wild. What a bizarre album. Yeah, that one's that one's great. Yeah, I really like that one. I'm trying to think of Oh, uh, did you ever see any uh like funny uh live performances like happen? Like she was talking about any cringe moments? Uh not in person that I can remember. Um I just know the the ones like we've seen online where like uh was it uh, convulse? Where the, you know, I think I already brought this up. Where his like guitar is like falling off, and he's like stopping. And he can't play. <laughs> yeah, he takes like two minutes to put his guitar strap back on. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember any. How about you? No, I I, I, I can't really think of any either. I, I've I've got a couple. Uh, the first is just there wasn't anything specifically cringy about either band that played but it was just the weirdest combination and thus a weird combination of attendees so you had sodom headlining and the support was fin troll oh, like, what that else? sounds cool who who does that like you have half the people there wearing like fur and drinking horns and the other ones are just old thrashers being like what the fuck is this <laughs> i just know that crowd real meddlers and fur yep. yeah yeah <laughs> but the no, the, probably the cringiest one I saw was Bolzer, the uh, the Swiss band. Mm-hmm. Uh, they played, uh, I want to say 2019, 2018, something like that. And they delayed the show by like an hour, an hour and a half, just because the singer wasn't happy with the sound he was getting. And we're playing in a dive bar here. Like, you're not going to get like rock stadium sound. And he kept yelling at the um, the sound guy, telling him to turn this up, turn that up. And the guy's like, it doesn't go up any further. Like, I, I've done everything I can. And they had to borrow equipment from another band that played. And they kept complaining about the equipment to the crowd. And it's just, oh my god. It was just so crazy. Sorry, creepy. guys. This when isn't they... our best performance. It's the equipment. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't like, imagine Shut something up and like play. that. Yeah, but and like yeah, by the time you started playing, like no that, one cared yeah. anymore. Yeah, you're not gonna sound like the record, man. Just play. <laughs> yeah, speaking from like our own experience playing live, me and you probably like we usually can't even hear what we're doing, anyways. No, right? We're just I'm just kind of looking at you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing what I'm playing, but I'm not even paying attention to anything else because I have to yell into a microphone and play the guitar. So there's like no time to think about anything. Yeah, just thinking. It's all just Paul, very Paul looks at Dan, and Dan is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just we're just playing the song at the same time. <laughs> yep. I, I, I think it works out. I think right? it I yeah. think it works out pretty okay. Usually we didn't we get have... any footage last time and we should have. Yeah, when we have video it, it comes out well. I just thought of something kind of kind of cringy or kind of stupid. Um I saw <laughs> Demon C maybe back in 2015 maybe. And um people were like stage diving. And somebody stepped on the bass player had a fucking distortion pedal and like the people getting on stage kept stepping on it and he stopped the song <laughs> and he's like, you guys keep stepping on my pedal, knock it off, man, come on. And he did that like three times where he would stop and get on the mic and complain about people stepping on his uh, distortion pedal. <laughs> I don't know. I it, it, It's just like a, it just seemed like a weak move. Just like, dude, deal with yeah. it. You're at a show. What, what are you doing? Yeah, it's all I don't know. Uh, what were you going to say, okay. Hope? Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I I go to a lot of shows, and I don't know if anyone else mm-hmm. has noticed, like, a huge influx in people stage diving and crowd surfing. Oh, no. I feel like it's happened a lot more lately, like, especially within the last few years. Maybe post-COVID, people are just living their best lives or whatever, but... I mean, I'm for it. Have fun. It's just irritating because I'm always up front and then you have to like constantly be on your guard or else you're going to get kicked in the face. There rarely does a show go by that I don't get kicked in the face. Yeah. No, and it's not. at like the most unexpected <clears throat> type of shows too. It's like, why are you crowd surfing at the death metal show? <laughs> Green Day. I mean, I feel like I haven't seen that kind of stuff <laughs> in such a long time just because like well maybe during the thrash days i I was going to thrash shows a lot in like the late 2000s early 2010s 
and that was that was going on a lot. There's a bunch of stage diving and uh, crowd surfing and stuff. But yeah, not really with um, with black metal or death metal bands. It seems like it's always a uh, an older crowd of people who kind of just want to stand there and drink beer. Yeah, the arm crossing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I <laughs> that, get I me. get you want to. Yeah, I I I, I <laughs> that's me now too. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's like I get it. I get the people who want to do that. But also at the same time, if you're playing a show, you don't want that you want people going insane so it's like a it's like uh i don't even know what the word is it's like you want it yeah. but you don't want it you know you can't have it all i guess i, I think a healthy because i don't want to do it because i don't want to do it because i'm old and like i'm gonna like shoulders all fucked up my ankles all fucked up it's like i don't want to do it right. but i want you to do it while i'm playing my playing my set <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> Do it. I can't there was do it a anymore. video. Oh no, me neither. There was a video that went viral recently. I don't know if you guys saw it. I think it was at Vakken, and some guy went to the crowd and he started to do like the whole hardcore karate kick thing. Oh, um, that is I so rude. That I hate that shit. Personally. I hate it too. Oh, me too. So, this guy, and it was during Dying Fetus, so you know whatever. Um, but this guy <laughs> who had been around obviously for quite a while, like grabbed the kid and kind of like you know, shook him and was like, hey, this isn't the place type thing. Like, you didn't hear what he said, but that was definitely the interaction. And he was nice about it. He gave him a pat on the back and then continued on his way into the pit. <laughs> oh, whippersnapper. Um, and, he, and the sentiment online from most people was like, man, fuck that old guy. Like, that kid was just trying to have fun. And meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, no, that was 100% the right thing to do. Like, that's he not did a good thing. the vibe. He did a very good thing. That's yeah. not the vibe. Somebody was going to knock that kid fucking out. Yeah. And, Dying you know. Fetus brings the... They're trying to get, like, a larger audience. So they're, like, playing shows with, like, terror and, like, suicide silence. And, you know, just getting, right. like, hardcore kids into them. Which, uh, you know, go ahead. Because, you know, they obviously have <laughs> those, like, slam uh, breakdowns that are going to be... Um, you know, liked by those by those people, that audience, but right. it's just bad etiquette. I don't know. It's just like what it the is. hell? <laughs> oh, hard. I hate. I hate that. I hate seeing it. Yeah, like, like it, it's one of those things where you see it online, and you're. Well, it's, it's like it, one of those things where you see somebody get assaulted online. It, can, it makes you mad. It reminds me it's of like, like seeing a, people do that. It reminds me of like Fuck. a TikTok dance because you're it's obviously cringe. not like. It is because you're not like going there it's and, been. and you know how to do it. You're practicing at home. And you're right. fucking like the getting these moves down. And yeah, like... yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like uh, it's not like thrash moshing where you're basically just kind of like Frummy. keeping up with a fucking circle. Yeah, there's no... yeah, and you're kind of shoving and staying on your feet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thrash the thrash circle is like one thing. It, it could, get, could get a little rowdy, but uh, it's basically not that big of a deal. But then you get like yeah, the 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 fucking big swings, the kick, and then they'll do that, like, crowd-killing thing <laughs> where you'll get, you'll, like, hit a fucking lady in the face, and it's just like, dude, it's, it's you're gonna fucking break somebody's nose. I don't know, man. I get it at some point. It's like, it's metal, it's violent, but at the same time, it's just like, dude, you're such a fucking doish. Yeah, it's, uh... So, that was happening recently, actually, it was sometime last year, at a Dungeon Serpent show, and, um, Bruh. somebody started doing that, yeah, somebody that, started doing that really, bullshit. That's a bad look. And, um, <laughs> truly, and, uh, another person in a fairly well-known death metal band from Vancouver, um, turned around and threw his drink in the kid's face. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that was, that was the right move. 100%, yeah, you, you, if that you shouldn't be, me out, shouldn't be doing that. No. The goggles do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't been to a show since uh, the pandemic, and I'm planning on going some in the near future. Um, it's kind of making me dread that. <laughs> Just start practicing I mean, it's your not moves. that bad depending <clears throat> where you are, right? Like, because for me, I'm right up front. I'm right at the barrier almost 100% of the time. So I really don't deal that's with where, it. That's it where I like happens. to be too, right? Yeah, but it just, like, it happens behind me for the most part. So, like, when that happened in the, at the Dungeon Serpent show, I turned around to see it, and I wasn't affected by it. I just got, like, squished into the barrier sometimes. You know, I'm going to wear, like, a camping backpack with a sleeping bag in it. Just as protection. <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 there's always, like, different things that people do at metal shows, and 
some things are acceptable, some things aren't. Some things are more fun than others. It's like when we saw Convulse, the vibe was like the place is completely jam packed in a tiny little bar, but everyone in the everyone in the room is moving, so like you're pitting, but there's not much momentum, so you're not really going to get hurt. It's just like it's like a side swing kind of thing. The whole room is like doing the wave or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like SpongeBob and the nematodes. <laughs> yes, it's like SpongeBob and the nematodes. It's exactly what it's like. <laughs> Down there, sir. <laughs> and since Squidward wants his mommy or whatever. Yeah, no, no stage there. It was just at a bar, so no diving. Yeah. There's no a nothing. stage. I don't. Th I don't think anybody would even dream to stage dive that place. Yeah. But that place isn't even yeah, there some anymore. Of the, uh, some of the best shows I've been to just there. don't have a stage. True. Yeah. 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 Versus like uh, that other bar, like right across the street, Paul. You know what I'm talking about when we saw uh, Maquahedal. Yeah. Ooh. So. There, that was basically, okay, everyone's, like, older and probably in their 30s and 40s and even 50s. But everyone's kind of just standing around drinking. And uh, But Makuhito put on a good show, so it kind of didn't matter that there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, moshing and shit. It, it, you know, at some point, we can not do that. But there's, there's a time <laughs> and place for everything, I think. Yeah, he probably, he probably like, oh, that was the worst L.A. show I've had. No I, movement. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It's weird. I always hear different opinions from uh, people in black metal bands. Some people, like um, Paul Letney from Profanatica, he wants people to go crazy. Yeah. And then <laughs> Makuhito, I can't imagine that they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would imagine. seem like the type. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of weird. Just appreciate it. Takes it. himself very seriously. <laughs> yeah. But also, I feel like the general audience that he attracts is not the type to do that? No, that maybe that's why none of that was happening, really. Yeah. But Great just fans. just to be ju just to give you kind of an idea about the what that show looked like, it's in right across the street from Skid Row, where, you know where all the bums are, mm -hmm. and I, I would say ninety eight percent of the audience is Mexican. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It's LA. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you guys know that. There's if you go to shows uh, out in LA, you're not going to get any white people. You you might get one. Yeah. Oh yeah. That last Warriors Chalice show was pretty good. Yep. There was a tiny bit of mosh. There, it was like who was who was even watching us? <laughs> the bands. Just the bands. The other bands that played were like the only people watching us. And then it was like people <laughs> at their merch tables, like watching from across the like across the room. Hey, but we got rid of our merch that night. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> after the after we're done playing, Paul goes up to the mic. He's like, uh, "We got free merch back there," and I had to tell him, "Like, I'm not taking that stuff back on the plane with me. Just take it." <laughs> it's one way to get rid of it. Yeah, yes, yeah, got get rid of it all. There, there goes the uh, the Bunsen burner recordings entire like <laughs> the catalog. <laughs> it's all gone. We're out of business. Yep. <laughs> Except for the new CD. It's over, guys. Mm hmm. And All these... we have left is this podcast. Yeah, and uh, what are we covering today? It's your pick, right, Dan? Who, me? Yep. Yeah, uh -huh. I guess so. Um, today, we are covering uh, August Moon from Finland. <laughs> and their, uh, 19... I believe it's from 1993, their demo, Rose Gardens. And maybe some people know who this band is from their sister band, or brother band, whatever. As Serenity Fades. Um, yeah. Uh, what Do you guys know who As Serenity Fades is? Yeah. Yeah. Were you guys fans? Yeah. I, well, I, what, I haven't heard their think? demos, but I've, I know uh, Earthborn. I like Earthborn. Yeah, I believe they only had one demo before Earthborn. Hope, did you know who that too. was, As Serenity Fades? So... I knew of them, but I had to go back and re-listen to everything. Um, and I'm glad I did. I had a great time. Well, what do you think of that band? Um, I really dug it. Very Paradise Lost, you know, uh, sense of romanticism. Um, which that's what, I, that's I, what a lot I, of people say. A lot of people say yeah. Paradise Lost. I like but I think they straight up said it, too. Way more, like, heavy metal influence. Yeah, it... it Honestly, I, I like Asteroidity Fades 
better than Me too. Uh, Paradise Lost. I'm not really the biggest Paradise Lost guy. I use them a lot for like reference, just because I know them and I'm like familiar with everything. But uh, I feel like Par- like Asteroid Fades and August Moon are both um, kind of uh, their, their music is is more interesting to me than Paradise Lost is. I will say I would agree with that. Yeah. That. Yeah. As Serenity Fades is a little... is I like that more than August Moon, though. So do I. I like As Serenity Fades better, too. I just felt like... They're they're pretty similar in what they do, but... I, I think August Moon kind of takes, like, the, the brutality up a little bit. They're, uh, they're, I don't know, man. They're, 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 they're faster paced than uh, yeah, definitely. As Serenity Fades is. I feel like they're it's like the rawer version of As Serenity Fades, because they you know they has the same leads and everything, but it seems like on um, you know As Serenity Fades Earthborn like the drummer it's the same drummer for August Moon, is like mm-hmm. way more competent. He's doing like a bunch more fills and and shit like that, different beats too, but uh, on Rose Garden he's kind of seems like he's going beyond his abilities. And not uh, not performing to that caliber like he did on Earthborn. I I think they're just two different things. Like they're, they're you could compare them because they're so close together, but I I think they're like two set totally separate ideas. I think they just take out the like doom doom aspect out of it, and they're pretty much you know the same pretty picture. much yeah. It, it's it well I mean I I have the I told you Paul I have the um the vinyl of. Yeah, uh, both all, all of these things. It's Earthborn, it's Lowering Sunset, and it's Rose Gardens, like all together. Yeah. And there's some uh, like uh, magazine interviews. Oh, what does and it say? They, they pretty much yeah, say that. that. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. You have the vinyl. Yeah, too? I was interested. I I don't, but I found some scans of it online, and it was interesting. Oh shit! The drummer mentioned that. Um... He described as Serenity Fades as sad and melodic death metal, and August Moon as happy and melodic death metal. Yeah, there's a point like, where right. it says, "It says happy, brutal death metal" is what it says. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was weird because, like, from as Serenity Fades, I felt like their heavy metal, like, uh, like parts that they would have or like influence riffs were coming straight from like. Um, you know, heavy metal, which is more, like, happier and all that, but with August Moon, I felt like their heavy metal influence, like, I heard, especially in the first song, a lot more riffs that sounded like Rotting Christ shit, just, like, sped up. Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wanted to say, like, Septic Flesh, too. I think they, um, yeah, that was something they said in the interview, too. They said that people compare them to Paradise Lost and... Uh, septic flesh and they said they didn't they don't like that comparison <laughs> huh. they, they straight yeah, up say the, that go ahead sorry go ahead oh no, I, was I was gonna, gonna say, say that, that uh... <laughs> <laughs> bruh <laughs> anyway okay, you, someone you other than me and now. Dan say something because it's not gonna work let me let me finish my point so uh, with this more happy death metal <laughs> they're using heavy metal through this like darker evil uh, you know riding Christ like Greek black metal so I I just thought that was interesting that they kind of get heavy metal from different parts, but also, um, you know, kind of having the opposite effect. Fred word speak. I'm so happy. I'm not (laughs) the only one that picked up on black metal and that because I'm listening to it and I kept thinking. So the first track in particular uh, has a riff around the midway point before the clean vocals kick in that just made me think Gorgoroth. This sounds like the last track off of Pentagram. And I'm like, people are going to think I'm fucking nuts. <laughs> no, um, I. it's funny because I was going to bring that up. I, I read in one of the interviews for Astar and 80 Fades that it was either the drummer or the guitarist said that none of them like black metal, <laughs> which really surprised me because the opening riff to the first track is very Finnish black metal. Um, and I couldn't put my finger on what exactly it reminded me of, like what song it was, but it's it's either early Sargeist, maybe Bornat, um, mid-era Satanic Warmaster, like Fimble Winter shit. Hmm. But it's got like, it's such a melodic, triumphant Finnish black metal riff. And I know exactly the one you're talking about, the one in the middle. It's 
yeah, it's super Norwegian, like out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, the very first riff on the first song made me think of two different bands. First was Carpathian Full Moon. And mm-hmm. the second was the Polish Infernum on the second album, uh, Farewell. There's just there's a song on there called Hisarna that, for whatever reason, made me... Well, that song made me think of. But I'm not, I'm not really sure it's a very good comparison, but Carpathian Full Moon, definitely. Uh, I think it was just the guitar tone that made me think of uh, Infernum, but Carpathian Full Moon, I think, was a bit more of a actual riff similarity. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of then, because I could not put my finger on it, and I haven't listened to Serenades and Blood Miner for a while. Yeah, and I kept playing that one song over and over again, thinking, like, this makes me... I, I That first riff and that first section makes me think of something that I can't put my finger on. And I'm not sure I actually got to it, but, uh, you know, that's it is what it is. That's interesting that you guys bring up uh, that this sounds like black metal. Do, do you mean that, like, the melodies do? Because I, I don't think there's a whole lot of um, corded tremolo parts. A lot of it's just single note tremolo parts. Yeah, the melodies for me. I, I definitely get that with the first song. It, it sounds bulky. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. You know, the, the clean vocals... Um, yeah, I was going to say, what about the elephant in the room? <laughs> you know, I, I like them. Uh, oh my god, it, I nearly don't like Blump. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Correct. Now, you know what they made me think of? Um, uh, amorphous. Tales of the Tales like uh, from the Thousand Lakes. punching desk right now. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, at least I, wrote, like, I, at yeah, least I, I like Thrash, the okay? <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, Tales from the Thousand Lakes, it made me think of the clean vocals in that. Because they're kind of nasal, a little awkward, but I really liked the fact that they traded that off with the harsh vocals and sometimes played them simultaneously. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, they're not great vocals, um, but for they're whatever finished. reason, it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it, it it worked for me, and I think it's because it made me think of that amorphous album, and I have very fond memories of that album, so. Yeah, it kind of reminded me. Because, like, me... objectively speaking, they're not very good. <laughs> yeah, I wrote the same thing about Amorphous uh, Tale from Thousand Lakes. It kind of yeah. reminded me of the the clean vocals on that uh, um, Kekul song that we liked and uh, Dream for a Moment. But, uh, yeah. you know, how he's, like, kind of just, like, going along with the melody. Like, because he's just singing the, the guitar the guitar lead over, or at least in the first part where uh, it, it Where it's, like, comes out. Yeah. No, yeah. the DB part that that one I actually like that better than uh, when he's like singing along with the riff when it was first introduced in the first song. Yeah, th- those are some of my favorite moments the the D beat moments and then like the dismember thrash beat uh, yeah parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. that was good. I I mean I listened to this thing <clears throat> this demo I don't know eight or nine times and I never got used to the the cleans. Um, I think it kind of reminded me of like, so one of my only issues with um, Left Hand Path Entombed is the cleans that show up in that one track. I think it's Bitter Loss. Um, Even some early Edge of Sanity had it, but these vocals are very reminiscent of like later In Flames or -hmm. even early Metalcore, which is of course not the case based on when this was recorded. So I guess you could say it's it's ahead of its time in that way. Yeah. Um, But I can't even think of the black metal thing too. It is. Um, but with the exception of Amorphous, I can't really think of other death metal that was really doing similar things at the time. It's really interesting. Um, but it's kind of weird because after the second track, the cleans just disappear. Yeah, They, well, they don't it, happen it, again. Well, it turns into like the chanty sort of uh, like I vocals. Love. Yeah, I love that. Like in, in In Silence, like they should have did that throughout the whole uh, you know release whenever there was a different dynamic for vocals. Because like, that's perfect. It's so good. Like it's like a undead army kind of chanting, like those echoing vocals. Yeah, probably my fave part on the thing. I I love it. Yeah, that third song is like that. That's one that really stuck out to me. It's so so good, especially at the, 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 end. the end. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> 
it? And then the blast that happened over it. Oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, and then they do like the symbol choking part too, do the punches and Yes. Yeah. That's when his drum work shines. Yeah. But it feels like half the time when he's going fast, he's like holding back. He doesn't want to go as fast as he can. I feel like mm. <laughs> he's like holding back that savagery. I think he's going as fast as he needs to be. I mean, the drums still do feel pretty savage to me. Ah, oh, they feel like they feel like slow to me. <laughs> That's interesting. I, 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 I literally I wrote down that. that the drumming is the strongest part to me. I love it. But again, Paul, you're a drummer, so you would pick up on things that I wouldn't, right? Like, okay, so I compared this album to two releases or one, you know, two bands. Um, one I'll bring up now, I'll bring it the other later. Um, so, you guys know, uh, the Dawn of Dreams. I'm trying to remember the, uh, release of that demo, or that EP. I think they only have the one. Yeah, that reminds me of, uh, yeah, Dawn of Dreams, and, um... What year is that one? Oh, it's Silent Endless Nothing in 96. Yeah, so, like, that, like, the drumming on there is, like where i fucking wanted like if you hear that it's it's obviously you know crisp and clean but it just takes it to the next level with drumming especially in like that first song but throughout the whole release it it's it's like top notch and even like melodically and with the vocals it sounds a lot like what august moon could have became if they you know kept going i feel like if you guys uh, heard that one, I know Dan has. No, I I I've so. heard Dawn of Dreams, but it's been a very long time, so I couldn't recall. It's melodic death metal, but more brutal in an old school way. Yeah. Mm. Like ima imagine what what melodic death metal would sound like in '96, like a very pretty melodic death metal from Germany. It's <laughs> I feel like everything about the 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 year and the the name and the the country, it all kind of, you can imagine what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll still be Decent blown away. Too. Yeah, so that, that that's what I heard. I like the drumming. There's just like far more extreme, but you know, like honed in and like kept together. Whereas here it's like kind of, it is like held back. And uh, I don't know. That, that's just what I felt like during like, especially the blast parts, but like even the like thrash beats, he's not like, doing like just like single hits on the hi-hat instead of doing like the double thrash and like you know he's definitely like just trying to keep the time rather than like just letting go and playing you know but that's just my gripes maybe he was just pacing himself yeah exactly just keeping the time <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, like a slight what? sloppiness a, a, a few points in it reminded me a lot of actually um Velvet creation from you, Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Same year too, right? Uh, ninety-three. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, that 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 was kind of interesting too. It's like some of the the shit that this is contemporary with, and the way that it's pretty much melodic the entire way through. There's like no breaks with you, Christ. You get a lot of uh, a, a lot of non-melodic riffs. Yeah. With this, you you get non-stop. Yeah, like in that first song where before it breaks out into the clean section, it's just like like this sick ass ascension of just like these two. Uh, is it two guitars or just one? I guess it's uh, just two. one. They're they're they're, har they're harmonizing, I think. Oh okay. Well, yeah. They have like, to be on that on that part. It was just like so great, but then like vocals took me out. But you know, after a couple more listens, I was like, all right, parts come in. I'm 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 okay with it. But you know, <laughs> first couple of times, I was like, ah, oh, it just take some momentum out for me you know uh, one shout out i want to give though on this demo the part i liked the most was the harsh vocals they were so deep and pronounced mm -hmm. Fantastic. and the reverb on them was just right i, I love those vocals yeah they're great it yeah, almost sounds like that. there's a like there's a like a pitch shifter on it but only like a quarter of the way mm, maybe maybe that's what it sounds like. And it's, uh, and it's Faith not is the like same. that too. It's like too brutal. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's not the same vocalist for Astronomy Fates, which really surprises me because when you listen to it back to back, I mean, it sounds so It sounds similar, the so same. That, yeah. So that could be, yeah, I think you're onto something there. 
Yeah, I, it, maybe they because it's not a full on like gore grind pitch shift. It's like, yeah, like twenty five percent of the way. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It Go makes it sound it. like whoa, this guy's really good at vocals, but maybe he's actually not. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna mention also, in like, this band sounds like in a parallel universe where Convulse didn't go death and roll they went like melodic death metal after that first album I think this <laughs> is what they would have sounded like uh, I was getting a lot of like Convulse vibes from like first album type shit um, on here I, I get I get that I kind of get Convulse even on Reflections too kind of the, the create creativity wise and like how well Reflections is pretty fucking melodic too, even though it's like a weird, like Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, influenced kind of album. Yeah, <laughs> mm. it is. That's what they straight up said. They were listening to the Chili Peppers and they did that. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. And you know what? Hearing it said out loud is just funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think of some of those like really uh, jazzy, like funk jazz fusion kind of riffs. Like it makes sense. Cause that's I... like what Flea would be doing. I think like in a in a certain section there's like one kind of standout death and roll riff on this. I think it may be in the third song. I'm trying to remember exactly where we'll we'll hear that later. Um but that's where it kind of like hit me. I was like, "Oh, this does sound like it could be from like Reflections or you know, the same musicians, you know, playing some different rather than the death and roll they're playing the melodic death metal." I like what you were saying about the like uh, ascension thing. I, I felt like that was going on during the blast beat parts just because the the riffs that are happening are like you guys said really kind of like black metal feeling they're very like mystical yeah. sounding riffs mm -hmm. and like ascent like ascending like ascending to a higher plane or something it's got a it's this whole thing has a really interesting atmosphere I think that's why I like it so much and all the riffs um I don't know man they, they flow so well to me I I feel like Dude. it a, ba a band this young and what they did, I, they should be very proud of uh, of this release. Yeah, the guitar playing yeah, is like sure. the the straight up focal point of this, and it's like obviously guitar led music, but it feels like it's more like emotionally like lead wise, like taking you to different sort of atmospheres. Yeah, it, yeah, you know. And um, I was gonna mention the bass playing on here. There's certain parts where you can hear them like playing like octaves and shit and it it's so subtle but it, it it sort of comes out in like that muddy production and when it does it's like always uh you know great to hear yeah well on metal archives and in their um in the interviews that they've done they classify themselves as a technical death metal band in 93 yeah i thought that was odd like seeing that i was like i, I they're I don't know if it's like technical to play that. It just sounded more like melodic, if anything. But they they yeah. considered it to be like really technical music at that that you know when they were <laughs> playing it. That's what they considered to be very technical, and I kind of get that. It's a very different sound than what you would expect from a technical death metal band. Yeah, I wonder if you know it's like, like it's like calling Decameron a technical death metal band or At the Gates a oh, technical yeah. death metal band because yeah. they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, trying to play that shit, fucking yeah. Yeah, like, the first two At The Gates records are, um, you know, just, like, totally alien, the way Alf Svensson wrote. Yeah, just trying to even, to play that, you know, it must be, yeah, technical. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting what you, how early this comes out compared to, I mean, because what, what you guys uh, compared it to a few things, right, like uh, Tales from a Thousand Lakes, this is a year before that. Yeah. This is a year before uh, Lunar Strain from In Flames. Mm -hmm. Same year as Sky Dancer, uh, Dark Tranquility. Same year as uh, With Fear I Kiss the Burning Darkness. And it's also the same year as the uh, Canaris Quintet demo. And this is better than the Canaris Quintet demo. Because, again, you get, with like the Canaris Quintet demo, you get... Uh, some of these, like tremoloed uh, single note things, but they're more like the first, like they're more similar to like the first um, Dark Tranquility demo, which is like more or less sounds like grotesque or something. Hmm. Was... And then with uh, Canaris Quintet, you also get like a bunch of fucking entombed riffs, DB fucking 
crust punk riffs. I was going to mention, it might have foreshadowed with the reference of uh, Dawn of Dreams, but, you know, this contemporary with uh, promo, promo 93 from Praxism, and I, I kind of felt that sort of uh, comparison when I was listening to oh, them. Oh, yeah. Like they're, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's like, not you know, obviously not their, like, sort of death and roll um you know. It's really riffs. not death and roll at all. Yeah, it's like just straight up the, like, kind of that brutal, like, melodic shit. Yeah, yeah. Th- this this is really comparable to uh, Promo 93. Now, Promo 93 is better than this. Yeah. But this is still, I, I think, one of the better um, early, like, really early melodic death metal releases. Like like I said, it, it's before Lunar Strain. It's same year as um, the second At The Gates album. Same year as, or before... Uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Same year as uh, Sky Dancer, so it, it's pretty contemporary with a lot of things. Yeah, you know, and it's the same year as the S. Randy Fades release, so they both released these things, you know, in the same year. Yeah, it must have been overshadowed by like just the like death and roll movement or something, because they it wasn't hap- like was was there like melodic death metal besides like maybe like Sentence or something that was going on. Like if they would no, have been I think, in like Sweden I think this or is something. The same, I think this is the same year as Sentenced. Because if they would have been like the second in one. like you know Gothenburg or something, I think this may have been a little bit more um, good company, you know. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a really interesting thing too. You could also call North from here like a technical death metal album. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, straight up. But 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 that has such a different feel than this. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of is is way more technical. It's going all over the place with all kinds of fucking uh, influences like atheists and um, probably at the gates and all kinds of stuff I, with this. Well, they pretty much said in, in, uh, in that magazine that they were influenced mainly by at the gates and um, soul site journey. And at that hmm. point, the only at the gates album, well, there was that uh, the gardens of grief. And then there was, uh, uh, you know, the red in the sky is ours. So they had to go off that. And then like dark throne, Oh man, I wish technical death metal would have stayed that way. <laughs> yeah. More more focused on like the structures than like how many notes you can squeeze in in a in a in a riff. Yeah. <laughs> Rings of Saturn. Yeah, like uh, brutal death metal starts that trend, doesn't it? Uh, I don't. I don't probably I'm... probably something like Cryptopsy is starting to you know, creep its way in like uh fucking what's that album? That crazy Cryptopsy album with the hardcore singer? Whisper Supremacy. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, like Whisper Supremacy that. is starting to start it, it, things are starting to get a little bit too technical. Even though that one's still pretty cool. It has some good riffs. Yeah, but that one's like way more like this kind of schizophrenic structures, you know, where it's still sort of along the lines of like the you know, like at the gate sort of uh sort of shit. Yeah. So if if August Moon is a technical death metal band, and North from here is like technical death metal, so At the Gates probably would be considered that way too, right? Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Cataclysm, early cataclysm. Yeah, cataclysm. For uh, sure. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Early suffocation. Well, they may have they may have started that. Oh yeah, they're they're <laughs> probably the biggest offenders. That's that's the band. I would think yeah. so. Yeah. Well, because they they started doing uh, recordings with um, the Suicide Silence guy. I remember that they, they they did like a, he had did a guest session on one of their songs or something. Yeah, I guess the brutal death metal kind of uh, killed it with uh, where technical death metal could have went. <laughs> where technical yeah. death metal could have went. Yeah, like uh, along the lines of like at the gates and. August Moon and Sentence and stuff. Yeah, it it gets really it gets really uh, hardcore ra- rather than this stuff that just gets uh, really creative. I think. Yeah, but it's not like I mean, they're, they're, it's not like you know, atheist technical either. You know, it's like a weird sort of gray area where it's like actually metal like the whole time instead of like trying to put you know jazz influence in it and you know obviously that is technical to play and technical music, but. It's, not really metal, you know. But you do still have some of the bands like 
carried through with that style. Like, I remember a couple weeks ago we were talking about the Slovakian bands, like Amorbital and uh, whichever ones, whichever other ones we brought up at that yeah, point. Yeah, Amorbital is they, pretty darn technical. Yeah, and they managed to do it without being, you know, super brutal either, right? So that's some bands were able to carry it on, but by and large it's kind of gone the way of the, you know. But I think they're just like in notes. a whole different, you know, whole different, uh, yeah. <laughs> Like especially with like all those all those uh, Slovakian bands like even like I mentioned, Apoplexy, like yeah. That oh, shit. that's the one we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Apoplexy. Yeah, like that is like, yeah, it's like on some other shit. Yeah, oh, they were like not on the yeah. same. They were not on the same plane of existence as we are when they wrote that. No. <laughs> I don't think anyone's reached actually. I'm yeah. morbidly either, right? Nvidia is just fucking bonkers. Yeah. Sand whisper. I feel like there's um, th- there's a really niche, like subgenre that this fits into, like this demo quality. Um, in, in a way, this is almost simplistic. Would you agree with that, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. So like, there there's a few bands that I well maybe like one or two, but uh, you ever heard of a band called Ancient Ceremony from Germany? Yeah. No. They have uh, a release called Cemetery Visions in '94. And I think this is probably the closest sounding thing to uh, August Moon. It, it's got the deep vocals and it's got the demo quality, kind of simplistic poetry type uh, death metal or de- black black death or whatever you want to call it. It, it was a, a great bit more photo. a bit more gothic though. Yeah, they look like one. looks like Peter Still on the left. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, holding but... the lady's legs. I guess so. Wait, which one? <laughs> Ancient the, oh, you're, you're looking at you're looking the band photo? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Does... Well, <laughs> he kind of looks like Peter Steele. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks like him. The German Peter Steele, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, an Italian band called Another Day. I think that's oh, also yeah. pretty similar. Another Day is... Yeah, they're sick. Because you know what I mean? It's It's like demo quality, melodic death metal, but again, not in the at the gate style not in the sentence style or or like the later at the gate style it's kind of this more simplistic romantic version of it yeah would you consider the, another, another Braxism in Italy. there yeah definitely it's Braxism funny you brought up a, uh, ancient ceremony because I was actually looking for a copy of that earlier today it, spooky yeah if you guys haven't heard this uh, this another day uh, the first demo, it's the Castle of Illusions. Yeah, that's great. Check that out. I mean, look at it. It looks kind of like a Yes album cover. It does. Yeah, it does why Why that. would you not want to listen to that? It's it's awesome. I think there's clean singing on this as well. I mean, I'm I'm fine with clean singing. It's just when it's nasally like that, it just it took me right out of it. But, I mean, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Well, these guys are from Italy. They might be better singers. <laughs> Hope, what's your take on um, Tales from the Thousand Lakes? Because that has some nasally clean vocals in it as well. Um, that is who? Oh, Amorphous. Amorphous. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I actually dig. <laughs> I actually dig Amorphous. Um, keeping in mind that that's not my my forte. Um. But I like the vocals in that. I don't recall them being nasally or off like, key. <laughs> like off putting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like this one, like, yeah, th- immediately took me one... out. Like, <laughs> the August. Month. I don't know. There, there's one track on Tales. Uh, hang on, what's it called? In the beginning. And that one starts basically right away with clean vocals. And I remember first hearing that going, okay, we're going, we're going super nasal here. Um, and that's that had the effect on me uh, that a few of you have described that um, uh, that Rose Gardens had on on you. Uh, and I don't know if that's what like kind of primed me for that exact sound because now I really love that Amorphous album. So I heard it on this. So I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's same same deal. That's fine. But um, yeah, that. The vocals on that one did the same thing to me that you guys are describing. It, it took me out for for quite a while, and then I had to really like kind of take my time to get into it. 
Uh, Have you guys ever seen the video for that one? I think the I second you track? Yeah, I think so. Do you remember the music video for that where, like, it's a bunch of kids in a classroom, like, destroying it and lighting fires and skateboarding and stuff? No, I have not seen the video for that. <laughs> yeah, there's like clean, there's like a clean singing, clean sung, uh, like chorus part. Oh, cool. It sounds it sounds awkward, but I mean, I, I keep mentioning this every time we talk about like awkward vocals and blump and all that stuff. I, I like it. I like the shitty singing or lazy singing. It just I don't know does something for me. Blump is in a whole other category, man. No, I know, but the <laughs> sing you still get the the strange uh, singing. Just for Fred. <laughs> I uh, I'm wasn't a, here. I'm for picking the Blump a thrash episode, album but... next. <laughs> I did dig Plump actually. I I listened to it. I liked it. I didn't find the vocals as nasally. Yeah, the vocals. No, cool. I didn't. I didn't find them nasal on Blump. I just found them lazy. I guess. To quote you, lazy. That's not fair. Here, here here's the thing. <laughs> if if Blump had incorporated harsh vocals as well, I probably would have been more on board. Just like if the August Moon demo didn't have harsh vocals, I probably wouldn't have liked it as much. Hmm. True. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, if that was a like a random fact the... because I'm staring at it now, the first Morphous album is one of my favorite death metal albums. I love that thing. <laughs> Man, you mentioned uh, Demon Pack on the last episode. I haven't checked him out, but I did. Uh, Eden Alive, um, that like single, it was like, from what I heard, it was it was great. Oh yeah, yeah that that band's awesome. It's basically just, it's basically Venom. It's great. <laughs> it says in their their lyrical themes, demons, Venom, black magic. <laughs> <laughs> they they talk sing about Venom. About yeah. Venom. <laughs> All right. I wonder if they mean the band. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. We sing about another band. It's very <laughs> awkward. <laughs> we wish but we were like you. I, I I'm I don't know how popular they were when they were releasing this stuff. By the sounds of it, not terribly, but they easily fit in the same same circle as Venom. Like it's same sort of uh, demonic new wave of British heavy metal thrashing sort of deal. That's like a direct bloodline descendant of motorhead it's yeah. awesome and those vocals yeah like you mentioned they're they're great yeah but are um, they as evil as uh venom no i wouldn't say that okay but fred's more familiar what do you think uh i, I think the bigger problem with that question is that they had so little material yeah um, but and the one thing they did release um, that had any exposure, anyways, was like Paul said, the Eden Alive EP, which, taken on like face value, you have a succubus on the cover. Yeah. The band's called she, Demon Pact. She looks the, like uh, the EP's called. She's Eden got the Alive. bangs. Yeah, she's got a Jennifer Aniston thing going on. She 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 kind of looks like um like one of those artsy college chicks <laughs> of the nowadays. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I think Demon Pact were on a trajectory to be as evil, if you want to use that term, as Venom. They just didn't get the chance to really like you know develop it all the way. But if you if you look at the lyrics to like, um, I think it's Raiders. Uh, hang on, let me pull them up here. I had it in front of me just now. Uh, where is it? Uh, the Crown Prince of Evil is sharpening his blade, gathering his mortals, heading for the for the fight. Powering the Raiders, their God-given right. So I mean, they they were kind of going in that direction, right? So. I think they they would have been a lot like Venom if they had a chance to, to develop it. I don't know, man. The fourth, <laughs> fourth song on the comp, Ain't No Woman Made a Fool Out of Me. <laughs> I I mean, you had well, he's Venom just as well. He's just letting you know, dude. Teacher's Pet, right? <laughs> teacher's yeah, what? Yeah, teacher's, teacher's Pet from Venom, right? So. True, true. 
literally she caught him a song about a, underneath a the kid. desk. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> she looked at she looked at me ass. and winked her eyes, said, "See you after class." <laughs> Get it up for the lads. Yeah, talking about <laughs> the birds, huh? <laughs> the birds. <laughs> but um, so, go ahead. I was gonna say for some reason I have REM's uh, "End of the World" stuck in my head. That's great. It starts with an earthquake, birds and snakes and aeroplanes. Leonard Bernstein. Not afraid. Yeah, Leonard Bernstein. I have a hurricane. <laughs> let's take yourself turn. Well, let's get that out of your head. Let's uh, listen okay. to uh, the August Moon sample. Um, the third track, okay. right? In silence. Sure. Ooh. All right. Let's. Uh, let's does it. Let's listen to that.
Yeah, right. yeah. We're back. Mm, mustard. Goddamn. That was uh, black metal. That was masterful. That I, I think that was masterful. Best track uh, for me, at least. Yeah. I I I think uh, I I was thinking of the first two tracks, but I, I I'm kind of coming around to the back half of this because I don't know if you guys can tell it's like two different recordings. Is it? Oh, one hundred. Yeah, it, it is. the The first two tracks are re-recordings. Ooh. Huh. And yeah. then they just put it together. It was supposed to be um. It it was supposed to be released by Exhumed Records. But they never got a deal, and or the the they had like financial problems, and uh, since their stuff never got released, they got discouraged and quit. Damn. Hmm. Do you know Exhumed Records? Fred. I don't. Rainbow Boy. Anybody? <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't so. think so. Actually. Yeah, they they have a couple familiar uh, releases. They did um. The vinyl for uh, Moonclad Reflection, the uh, second Dark Tranquility demo. Okay. And then oh, something you're okay. familiar with, Paul. They also did the uh, fertilizer. Um, oh, the really? The, yeah, the painting of annoyance or whatever. Yeah. That one's sick. So, yeah, they, they, they had a, a couple notable ones, and then they just like went out of business, and they never got to release August Moon. Damn. What a shame. It probably would have, probably would have done well around... Uh... Like you said, in flames and fertilizer. Yeah, definitely. It's it's different. I feel like it, it really is kind of a masterful piece, and this band has uh, a very like original sound on its own. It does differ a lot from uh, As Serenity Fades. Wait, so it's way fat. It, it I think I might kind of like the two bands equally now that I'm you know kind of coming to terms with it. Yeah, I was gonna say they. Who didn't have money? The label or August? Oh, Moon? the la the the label, the label was having sure. financial problems. But how did they release the fertilizer thing and a year later? <laughs> um, no, no, no. They so this band had this promo, and all they had was like kind of independent tapes, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to get you know a, a bunch of actual CDs made, maybe like five hundred or something copies. Oh, okay. But that never happened, and I don't think this ever really saw the light of day until um i believe it's crypt the crypt uh compilation with astronity fades i don't think it's ever seen the light of day since then i might i may be mistaken but that's the first release it's officially gotten i think the other stuff is just um independent releases uh, okay that makes sense so were they supposed to release uh things they already had recorded or they're supposed to record something new to be released i believe they were just going to release um these songs okay maybe maybe one or two more i don't exactly remember but i i'm i think it might have just been these songs you know uh kind of exported through a label and uh getting them some notoriety but they kind of didn't for the longest time I, I i don't think they got any notoriety until the uh the compilation came out because that's serenity fades they were on on the label how do you even come uh, across this me? Yeah. Um, I, w the vinyl. I I didn't know I didn't know who August Moon was. I just bought the uh, Earthborn vinyl when it came out in um, not 2011. I bought it a little bit later. Oh, okay. I bought I bought it in 2014 just because I um, I had heard uh, yeah, Astronity Fades, Earthborn, and uh, I don't know th that one's kind of one of my favorites too. Mm -hmm. That was kind of up there with like excrement it, it kind of has that again that demo uh weird melodic death metal like that doesn't really fit in especially yeah. from yeah. finland you know what i mean mm -hmm. nothing from finland fits in no 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 yeah that's what i mean and um I, I i didn't know i didn't know there was two bands on this thing and i put that in and i think i had the fucking record on the wrong speed so i heard it like slower <laughs> and the pitch shifted vocals were even <laughs> <laughs> lower and i'm like man this is i'm like man this is fucking heavy and i don't think i came back to it for a long time i'm like yeah whatever august moon blah that's so weird because uh, as the serenity yeah. fades it says uh 33 and a half rpm and then august moon 45 
<laughs> yeah, see, that's why I played it uh, too slow. Oh, that is bizarre. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I guess it's just so, shorter tracks because uh, I guess it's on its own, right? It's on its own disc. Cause, uh, yeah, it has a uh, it has its own um, uh, record. Oh, okay. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I I heard it uh, just by buying this thing. I didn't know that uh, they had like this brother band, and uh, yeah, for, for the longest time I never listened. I listened to it like the once, and I didn't even realize it was the wrong speed. <laughs> and um, I just I was just like whatever. I don't exactly remember when I came back to it and really uh, started to like it because it, it is one of my favorites. I do like this uh, August Moon demo a lot. Yeah, it's dank. Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, there, it's masterful. There, it's legit. It is. Yep. And it's it's so different than. Mm-hmm. Yeah, de- definitely. It, it fe- like the demo quality helps with that too, and especially how um, how unlike death metal this is. Th- there's really not much death metal qualities in this besides you know some faster drumming. But that but you could say the same thing about black metal. Yeah, because it would usually be like they would have like maybe some riffs like that and go into more death metal. But these like with you know death metal bands that are melodic, but this is just melodic the whole way through. Where it doesn't really have any dynamic riff wise, but they're just doing a lot with the, uh, you know, their their harmonies and uh, their leads, you know, that it's like interesting the whole way through. Yeah. This really does feel much more like black metal. Yeah. I, yeah. I found it hard to compare this to other other melodic death metal bands that don't fit in, even like. Cataclysm at this point, they had that um, gate of reincarnation at the time. Yeah. But that 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 feels death metal. That feels like savage, unhinged. This kind of has this like a little bit of the savage thing, but it's morely um, like like kind of what the lyrics are about. It, they're about like poetry and sadness and all this kind of shit. And that's what the music sounds like. It sounds like trying to evoke those emotions rather than trying to show off, even though it is. You know, slightly technical. Yeah, and I don't get this uh, review. <laughs> this better better left, left forgotten. forgotten. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Us? Where's that? I mean, some people just don't like uh, this kind of shit. I do. They this don't. is like my just, my it's my my thing. Yeah, they just don't like metal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they don't like good things. You know what part I really like is in the fourth track where he's like, "No, please, oh, no!" Yeah. <laughs> Big fan of that. <laughs> and then it sounds like he says "no," but like with an Australian accent, he's like, "No, no, 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 mate, no." Hope you said that. Uh, like melodic Finnish death metal really isn't your thing, right? Oh, it can be. Uh, it's can be. just not really something that I've overly familiarized myself with. I know, you know, a lot of the basics. <laughs> so when it comes to the stuff you're mostly interested in, like subgenre wise, you're you're really into like Finnish black metal, right? That's yeah. like more your thing. Yeah. Which is probably why I heard or maybe wanted to hear Vornat, Sargeist. No, I, I, I get it. Oh, I, I, I hear it too. too. I hear it too. Yeah. Well, what can we talk about there? Who are some of the... Because I like a lot of the Finnish black metal stuff too. Nat yeah. Fog uh, comes to mind. I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, God, that name sounds familiar. They have a... It's a Nat Fog with two T's. <laughs> it's... um. Oh, okay. They have a demo in 2008. If you haven't heard it, uh, I would suggest... Uh, you check it out. It's really like heroic sounding. Is that is that the kind of Finnish black metal you like? The really like satanic yeah. war master, uplifting kind of punky shit. Yeah, I like tr- uh, triumphant melodic. I like a lot of French black metal for that same reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do I. Like Herolorn. Please tell me Herolorn. Yeah. 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 That's isn't that some like early DSO? Yeah, two of the guys from. Uh... Or two or three of the guys from uh, Hero Learner went on to DSO. Yeah. Do you guys like uh, Death Spell Omega? It's my only band tattoo. <laughs> the Death Spell Omega really? tattoo. Yes, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Which is which is the, the... I've had many conversations about Death Spell Omega. 
<laughs> which which album would you recommend? Because I know a lot of people really like that orange one with the like flames on it. Yeah, Paracletus. Paracletus. Yeah. Um, I mean, my favorite is SMRC, C Momentum Requiaris Circumspice. <laughs> oh, the the third um, one, two thousand four. Yeah, and that's where they started to get real weird with it. You know, that's that's where their dissonance really started to come in. Fred, on the other hand, is a fan of Infernal Battles and, and Inquisitors, which are both fantastic albums. Um, what do you think of the art, artwork? I love for the artwork. Uh, sea Monument, the, the baby, the dead baby yeah. angel. <laughs> I'm staring at a poster of it right now. <laughs> and Fred, you said uh, Infernal Battles is the good one? Uh, Inquisitors, in terms of, strictly speaking, an album. Uh, Infernal Battles, I think, is a demo and some other tracks. But um, oh, just judging I mean, by it's, artwork, it's, it's Infernal not, Battles it's is the one that I like. When it, when it comes to black metal, I tend to like it more straightforward. So it's not surprising that as they got more complex, I kind of tuned out a bit. But I do really mm-hmm. like Paracletus and um, the second album. Paracletus? That That's what I was thinking fast, too. <laughs> fast, ite, blah, blah, blah. Get that blah, <laughs> An album title that Abrupt and Woody used, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, I I like what they're doing now. Uh, I do. Hope's gonna hate me for this. I think SMRC is a bit bloated. They hadn't found their footing yet, and that one they threw in a lot of stuff that didn't need to be in there. But when they toned it down a bit on the next two albums, is when I really like what they started doing with that style. Um, but as much as I like those albums, the early stuff is much more a style that I gravitate to more. So you'll hear me talking about Inquisitors and Infernal Battles more often than those. Even though like I like them, I appreciate them, I, I just like my black metal simpler, so I just listen to those more often. Yeah, because I know a lot of people like uh, Heracletus. Yeah, I like Cletus. And I, 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 do you like that one, Paul? Get off yeah. the dang roof! <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard it. Um, I, I don't really like it. No? No, it's too... They have too many of these, like, Mastodon-type riffs. Mm. These, like, bendy, almost like bluegrass-type riffs. I, I don't like that. A lot a lot of bands, a lot of black metal bands do that. And a lot of death metal bands do it, too. The ones that are, like, claim to be progressive and stuff. Do you guys know what I'm talking about with a lot of those, like... Yeah. Almost jazzy-type uh, riffs where it's like... There's a lot of slides and shit like that. Incantation does a lot of that. Uh, um, I, I like the, I like the way Incantation does it, but on this Paracletus, I, I don't like the way those riffs sound. It, and it's I feel like got that like a, album a is... Zillinger Escape Plan thing kind of going. Yes, right. yes, yeah, exactly. Like a like a hardcore sludge. Words. No, he's right. Because I, I I said these these riffs sound like Mastodon, and uh, I can't stand Mastodon. They're probably uh, the 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 band I would last listen to ever. I Raph, close your would ears. listen to anything. I know. I would rather listen to anything besides Mastodon. I I can't stand what they do, and yeah, uh, that I feel like Paracletus is mostly that. I I don't don't like those kinds of riffs. Yeah, technical it's, it's technical not sludge my riffs. You don't like uh, Scar Sided uh, by um, Leviathan either, right? Me? Yeah. I don't know. Uh... I like the uh, that one Leviathan album with the tenth sub level of suicide. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, the first album. Yeah. Um, I just want to know what's going on in the first nine levels. Well, we found out about the first, but everything else, what's going on? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, well, we we don't need to know. It's the it's the tenth one there, whatever. That's it's, the, is the that's tenth the, one we the need worst? To hear about. Or is that the like? Come on, we need details here. It's the black <laughs> metal. It's the it's the scariest. Ah, true. <laughs> yeah, look at the guy. It's pretty. Hope. What so, about um? Or go ahead, Frederick. I was going to say, if 10th is the scariest, why did they release the first sub-level of Suicide? It's getting us nowhere. We're going backwards. Don't know. Sorry, that was stupid. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to admit it. Holy shit. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Hope, uh, th- these bands might get- be getting into uh, like too happy territory for you, but what about... like? Um, Total Vernictung and uh, Roster Chester. What do you think of those guys? I know nothing about them. Only like ten. Really? They're yeah. so great. Yeah, yeah, they're the best. They're the best at the um, triumphant 
like they're high kind of note mass, kind but, of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're they're the best. Those two bands kind of rule it all, I think. Okay. When it comes to that kind of sound. I you really Abigor never heard Charles Vernon really well. Who? Oh yeah. Abigor on uh, Knock, especially on the second album, Knock, Knock him and... it, It's it's not the same. It's it's uh, it's very much different. I think. Yeah, he's playing like chords like on the fifth and sixth strings. <laughs> yeah, you're getting chords all you the way down like on I like where, where you should be. Uh, well, where you should be soloing, you know, like really high notes. <laughs> yeah, you know That's those, where he's doing the black metal chords yeah, down you there. You know those thrash solos. They're actually doing chords down there. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what Ross or Chester and Total. They're making black metal riffs out of the solo uh, guitar strings, like where he should be soloing. It's awesome. Ma if you've heard Machuhito, they do it sometimes too. Didn't he say yeah. that he gets it from there? Yeah, he did. He also oh, mentions um, he also mentions Sovereign from Brazil as well to be uh, to be uh, influences. Mm. I love um, Sonopfer from France. Who? I don't know if you guys are Sonopfer. Uh uh. Sonopfer. No, never heard of him. Very oh, Sun similar. Sunhopper. Yeah. <laughs> the Very one similar. whose name I look at and can't think of anything else. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did talk about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very triumphant, melodic, proud type riffs. Um, really recommend. What about the uh, the White Death album? Did you listen to that? Yes. That thing's great. <laughs> I, lo I like that one a lot. That one's really cool. Yeah, that song at the cool. end, um, White Death's Power, mm -hmm. where it's like uh, r really absurd it's it's, yeah. it's like super simple chords with the just uh really catchy stuff very absurd yeah uh what about finn did you like finn at all yeah actually um buddy's yeah, a they do some crazy of mine. stuff oh uh ak yeah or mk what's his name <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah all his stuff uh, is I, pretty good he's very talented um, the thing, the thing with him is, I feel like he writes a lot of the same riffs. You know what I mean? Like they all have yes, that similar do. quality to them. Mm -hmm. Kind of with all the bands besides like Infernal Sacrament. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, um, he released a demo with a side project of his called um, Apparition of Sunlight, mm -hmm. and that thing um, had some clean vocals on it that were not good. Um, they weren't his. They were somebody else's. Um, but that's an example of, of clean vocals where they ought not be. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I do like a lot that of that. Well, I, I've heard some of the uh, apparition. I might have to, I don't remember the uh, clean vocals. I'll have to check it out again. It's a good time. Yeah, but um, so who would you say like are some of your favorite um, Finnish bands besides uh, like DSO and um... That's French. Yeah, yeah or who, whoever, whoever, whoever else. Yeah, French, Get Finnish, your that kind together. of sound. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's on the archives, man. Fred, you're um, not going to... Uh, uh, Fred, you're not going to hurt me, are you? We're not sore at you. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, don't we'll be sore at after. me. We'll talk after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll he is going to hit me. He's going to berate me after this is over. I know it. <laughs> yeah, we'll correct that behavior. <laughs> Can you imagine? Paul's um, like, and we're done. What the fuck, Dan? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm always walking on eggshells with Fred. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. It is, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really scared of this guy. I know he's gonna like stomp my guts in. <laughs> this guy showed me his war face. I haven't slept in like a week. <laughs> uh, I like all sorts of Finnish black metal. I mean, I love the Herit, but that's not really where you get like the quintessential Finnish sound. Yeah, it's where you get the um, like bassy, blasphemy like, sound. Yeah, I love Impaled Nazarene. I love Archgoat, Horna. Um, I'm a huge, 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 please God, don't let's, let this podcast get out. Huge Clandestine Blaze fan. Um, <laughs> and They're really uh, fucking ugly doesn't... sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, vocals for DSO. Um, mm -hmm. And I love Judas Iscariot, which is obviously very similar, um, similar sounding black metal. Um, 
but yeah so you know all, all sorts of shit from mm. from what you know. about uh what about white wolves commando oh, you ever heard yeah. of them? Good. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah they're, they're terrific i really like what they do it's like really varied super raw black metal yeah and sometimes you get the satanic war master thing not too often right. and i i love satanic war master for the most part yeah, same here. I, I would say probably the, uh, what is it, the Krillian Satanist Madness. That's the one that uh, I heard first and like sticks with me. Um, first one I heard was Fimble Winter, which is not my favorite now, but you know how he always. That's have, one with like, the troll on it, right? Uh, yeah. I think it's like a like a werewolf, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. There you go. Yeah, their their um, first album is the first one I heard, and the one that's stuck with me most it has that really like gritty kind of Carpathian Wolves sound with no, without the uh, the keyboards, and that's always yeah. stuck with me. But Corellian is probably right up there with it too. Paul, who would you say uh, s- bands like that that you like? Mm, well, you know, the top of the genre is a, the. Total Vernatung probably the best one. Total Vernatung is probably the best of the best. Uh, yeah, like of that every, sound. everything about it, man. Because like, you know, the rest of those bands, you know, all black metal vocals, obviously, and you know, with Total Vernatung, they have the death metal vocals over that, which brings a whole new sound to it, as well as like the electronic drums, which just like, yeah. makes it like not like industrial in a way that you would think, but like definitely like kind of like nuclear, which is you know what they're obviously all about. Yeah, like the the oh. fact that the drums are so artificial, it it doesn't take away from the music at all. It actually kind of makes you want to fucking headbang and again like punch a hole through the wall. Yeah. Music's fucking incredible, and, and yeah, like you said, the uh, the death metal vocals over the like high like the highest of the high uh, riffing, like on the highest strings. It, it's a really cool. Um, yeah, contrast. It's a really cool contrast. Yeah, yeah. And it's a fucking great idea. Yeah, when I'm listening to that, I'm thinking, motherfucker, you're going to die. Yeah, motherfucker, <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just had to look him up. I, I do remember listening to this, and I remember thinking the logo is really cool, and it kind of reminds me of Vothana. Yeah, it does. Oh, uh, I'm one million times better than Vothana. Like the, the music you mean? Yeah, yeah. The band, well, band the music is awesome. No. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Total Vernick Tongue really does blow away, b- basically every band in this genre. Yeah. Like it, in, as far as quality goes, it's so much better. Yeah, it nuked the scene. Yeah. <laughs> totally nuked everything. <laughs> Still waiting on the new album. And then, and then Roster Chester is kind of a good break from that, because because those vocals kind of uh, contrast in a different way. That's mm-hmm. more goofy. But uh, Roster Chester is still pretty damn good. Yeah, they're they're I, I like them. Except for that, the newest album that they did, I, I kind of don't like it. Honestly, I haven't the pink one, it out. or not the pink one. It's called like Sonnenheim or something. You know, the one with the like uh, it's got like angels on it carrying a moon. No, I haven't checked that out. I'd say don't. I mean, check it out just to see. <laughs> check it out. Check it out just to see if you like it. But I don't like it. I'm good. I'd say just the 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 <laughs> first three uh, roster Chester releases. That's 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 all you need to do. Yeah. Speaking of both, Anna, though, you guys checked out the Sword of Darkness album, right? Yeah, that's awesome. It's it's such a good album. That's like um. That's like Vindir, but more youthful and more immature. But yeah, epic, I got. But with got an Windir epic sensibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with an epic sensibility, you only get when you're like fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> like I, 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 I listened to like Bothana and I like Bothana, but it, it kind of burst together after a while, right? But that's yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I can't totally, do Bothana. Totally really? different beast. It's. Eh. Incredible. Like Eisenwinter is the the Eisenwinter is the 
superior version of Othana, and not even all of it, just like one EP from 2004, or one demo from 2004 from Eyes and Winter. I feel like that does what Othana wanted to do and just, like, leaves it leaves it behind. Same thing with Roster Chester. I know Othana, like, everybody's... A, a lot of people really like that band, but it's hard, it's hard for me to listen to. I forgot to mention um, Anti Messiah's other band, uh, Vic, Angel Vic, Cunt. No, Vicarious Philly Day. Remember? I feel like that's a little bit hard to listen to. You think so? The second album is first album's pretty I, pretty clear. The second one's my, my favorite one. That, really? That's where, that's where I came up with that little instrumental riff for that or instrumental song for Warriors Jealous. Listen to that. Yeah, show. but but you know what I mean. The production is is very strange on that one. Yeah. It sounds like he recorded inside of like a, like a metal shed, and all the, the, <laughs> the, the vibrations of the metal are rattling the entire thing. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> well, now I want to hear it. Yeah, you, you should you, li- listen to it. It's like <laughs> it's, uh, I, I it's like it. anti-Catholic. It's interesting. Okay. Oh no. Well, before Jeez. this uh, regresses any further, <laughs> 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 what are your final thoughts? We're about hitting that time. Well, Coco back Rosso in my day, when you listened to death metal. <laughs> yeah, my death metal didn't sound like black metal, August Moon. <laughs> <laughs> we just called it dirty metal back then. Um, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah, August Moon. Uh, I liked it. Daphne Moon. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Freezing Moon, August Moon. I get it. Yeah, August Moon is before it's freezing. It's not quite there yet. It's kind of like... It's on the way, moon. yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's nice weather, but bring a sweater, moon. It's fucking moon worship. Yeah. <laughs> that was what Paul Ledney says. <laughs> yeah, he did. He's like, what's up with all these black metal bands fucking liking the moon so much? <laughs> I love it on God's job. You know that band, Despondent Moon, where the logo is, is just a moon? <laughs> Fuck the blood of the lamb. <laughs> or Opeth, <laughs> Opeth, the city under the moon. <laughs> Don't drawing down no, the moon. Opeth. <laughs> I don't think anybody here likes Opeth. Can we all just like? I do. No, you don't. No, do. God, it would be Paul. I'll tell it? you what you like. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Only Fred can. <laughs> Anthony gets all quiet when we talk about Opeth. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear it. Oh, I like him. Yeah, I said it. The Master's like Apprentice. You like Opa. You don't like Thrash. Yeah. Dude, you liked Barbie, but you didn't like Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I think that's saying something. <laughs> Bruh. Fast Times at Ridgemont High was like, you know, a dialogue movie, but nothing made sense and... It was, you know, of the times, definitely. She's gotta be somebody's baby tonight. <laughs> Every time, uh, what's her name gets nude, uh, what the hell, uh, Stacy. Yeah. See, I, I don't know these things. I listen to black metal. You listen yeah, to dirty hey, metal. Le, le, hey, that's really cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for being a cockhead. <laughs> All right, well, uh, all right. So August Moon, <laughs> we should get back to. <laughs> yeah. God, so many side tracks. <laughs> Fred, you're on a roll. You're killing it. Keep keep going, buddy. Yeah, no, I'm done. That's all I got. All right. Uh, Wait, what did you even say? So I liked, liked it. it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. It, it's, I like um, it too, dude. I I heard it. I heard 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 it before. I think because you told me to listen to it actually months ago. Um, mm-hmm. The those clean vocals right at the beginning immediately made me think of that amorphous album, so it set it off on the right note. Uh, and the fact that it's melodic death metal with some technicality that makes me think of black metal is such a weird combination of things all thrown together um, that I can't not like it. And the riffs are good. That's what matters, right? Uh, and I love mm-hmm. those vocals. They're they're so deep. They're they might be pitch shifted. We don't know. We should ask him one day. But until we find out, 
doesn't matter that's cool. the way I like them. So. No, it does, doesn't yeah. matter if they're pitch, pitch not, shifted or nothing not. wrong with a bit of pitch shifting. Only matter to nope, not at all. Bowman, huh? <laughs> yeah, he made that very clear. They are not. <laughs> that's pretty good. They're not like August Moon. <laughs> What year does fucking the Demi Lich album come out? Is it the same year as this? Yeah, I think it's 93. Yeah, so there you go. Technical death metal going diverging on two different uh, paths here. Yeah. Yeah. And again, uh, Demi Lich, the, those melodies and riffs are so much different than anything. I think I think uh, the August Moon riffs are pretty original on their own. They're, they're not exactly doing what... Uh, Dark Tranquility does. I I keep comparing them to, to Dark Tranquility just because they're probably like the Sky Dancer is the closest thing to a melodic death metal band going like as spazzy and as tech as you can go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At, during the time, I mean, you still have like Decameron and uh, Miscreant, but I think that stuff's a little bit later in like '96. I hope. What, yeah. What, what do you think of this? Uh, I really dug it. Um, I will definitely be going back to it. I think that last riff at the end of the third track is going to be in my head for a while. <laughs> um, I really liked the, oddly enough, black metal sensibility that it had going on. Um, great melodies. Huge fan of the, the gutturals. Um, and I will recommend this to anybody who wants some good melodic death metal. The production is great for what it is, too. Mm-hmm. Same. I, I I think like just about anybody, even non-metal people, like would be fine listening to this and and kind of you know get enjoyment out of it. I don't think this is uh, something you need to be listening to metal for a long time. It's not something that esoteric. It's just um, it, it's actually just good all around. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not gonna go to my mom and be like, hey, you might really dig this. Mom, but like the I, I, I see where I, you're coming from, but yeah, I think you could. I think you could go to maybe not mom, but uh, you just, know what? I, for, I will and yeah, report dad. back just, what she says. Yeah, maybe dad. Yeah, maybe dad. Maybe dad. <laughs> dad probably like it. Yeah, show this to your dad, guys. Dad won't shut it off. <laughs> My dad would take this.